What's good? It's Ozman the Wizard. And Naima. This is not another damn podcast. Gonna buy our damn yes, sales. sales. Episode 281, kid. Yes, 281. I know I forgot to mention this last week. Happy belated anniversary because we went right into the Bears debacle and um the Bears had just lost, but this week has been since Thursday since they got their ass whipped by Washington. So I said we just I'll do it now since I forgot. Once we started talking about the Bears, it derailed the whole podcast after that. <laughs> so happy belated anniversary, then kid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Had to get that out there. Yeah. And um as far as this weekend goes, it's um the sweetest day. Is it a real holiday? Yeah. Real or not? <laughs> real or Hallmark? Yeah. <laughs> this weekend, my lady, lady took me out Saturday to dinner, the sweetest day. And then we started doing our own research about the origins of sweetest day. And um we couldn't find anything that says how it became a holiday where the women celebrate men. It's like, when did that become a thing? But I already knew that Sweetest Day wasn't a national holiday. It's like you and so only in like around these parts, like Chicago, Detroit, like it's like yeah. <laughs> only around these parts, kid, is Sweetest Day. Cause if you look um like I remember years ago on the radio, it was a West Coast cat that was in the studio. It's when I was hanging out with Mike Love and the Diaz at GCI. Yeah. <laughs> They had mm-hmm. this dude from the West Coast in the studio, and he had no idea what that was. It happened to be honest. <laughs> He's like, what's that? <laughs> the dude had no idea. It's like in the 90s. Like, and we looked at like the origin of Sweetest Day was from like, well, basically, um, somebody was giving candy to like the less fortunate. Like, it was like, right, like, right, right. I saw that. Yeah. Sweetest Day, because like, yeah. To give the bro the poor motherfuckers candy. <laughs> That's what it, like how did how do you get from that to like, oh, this is where women take the guys, or we couldn't find that anywhere. <laughs> so I still don't know the origins of that tradition, but Sweetest Day was always kind of a fake holiday. This is probably only the second time in my life I've actually done anything on Sweetest Day. <laughs> yeah. But much appreciated for the lady though. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely appreciate yeah, we had a good time. Yeah, enjoyed a little seafood. Yeah. So <clears throat> Always nice. Yeah. Um, seafood. Um. Oh uh, yeah. With that, so mm-hmm. yeah, uh, we actually went to a party yesterday for um, well, for Sweetie's Day. Like we went, ended up having to fall that same time. Um, a longtime family friend. Um, they retired. Uh, and we went to their retirement party for uh, Miss Givens. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say who was yeah. this family friend? I remember the Givens. Yeah. So. Yeah. So like, uh, her yeah. girls threw her a party and. And y'all went, yeah. um, of course, with mom, you know. <laughs> so, our mom and their mom have known each other what over 30 years or something like 35 <laughs> years. It's a really long time, really, really, really long time. And so you, it was a nice you were close with one of the girls, like that's why you were invited, and I wasn't because I, I kind of knew the givens, but not like that. <laughs> Where you were like your homies with like one of the girls, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was really nice, though. It was a Good celebration I had. Celebration measures. <laughs> <laughs> had a good time, but I mean, it's always nice seeing like people celebrate like these different milestones and seeing them go to a new chapter. Like I love seeing, I love being around celebratory things. I love being around positive energy. I love being around happy occurrences because anything negative, I'm just like, now <laughs> it's like, I don't want it. I don't want it in my life. I don't want it looming over me. I was, like seeing people happy there. Miss two two seven was she there? Oh, um, I didn't see her there. Yeah, I didn't see her. Don't know yet. She's a family friend. Um, the creator of the original two two seven. Yeah, but yeah, she's a family friend. Because we got there a little late, so like uh, maybe some people may have came. And gone. Yeah, like she said. people may have came and gone because we got there a little later. Because definitely an older lady. So if she came, yeah. she, she left already. <laughs> But yeah, it was nice. It was good times, good, good fun, good eats, good happy moments. Like, you know, they posted a video of us dancing and I didn't know I was recording dancing, but it's another were y'all dancing? It's another story, but we were out there dancing. Were y'all dancing? Y'all wobbling? Were y'all dancing? Um, so they were playing. like Roland Martin with Hillary Clinton. Look that video up if you don't. <laughs> oh, no, so basically, what happened is is that um, 
uh, the DJ played uh, Proud Mary and me and my friend, we acted out the scene from What's Love Gotta Do With It with Tina. Do, 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 the, the whole version, Big Wheel. We did the whole version. We were dancing and then we, you know, did the, do, 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 Looking back, it was yeah. a, lot of, a lot of cap in that movie. <laughs> it was very entertaining, and oh, it, it was a bad movie. I can't yeah, say it was it. very entertaining. It was like historically and... accurate. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> and uh, high inside, both uh, Angela and Lawrence should have won Oscars for their roles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they definitely should have won because they did excellent portrayal of. Ike and Tina, I felt so. Yeah, no, accurate. The Lawrence is of was of Ike, but <laughs> he was good in the movie. We don't know how accurate it was. He was good. He was very he was good. good. He was definitely entertaining. <laughs> I don't know how accurate he was of Ike Turner. That's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> now, the older I get, the more I think about how, like, how we thought these were like um 100% fact, like these biopics, but like. <laughs> A lot of them is just like a creative license is what they call it. <laughs> but when you look at biopics now, it's like it does have the fine print of the inspired by true events. Yeah, based on a true story. Yeah. Like, yeah. That 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 oh, but that makes it so much inspired. It says based on a true that, but this this is this is a fictional story. It's like any real event. They put that disclaimer at the end. Why watch the credits all the way, like past all of the Marvel um post credits bullshit. Watch all of that to the very end when that last script says, like, yeah, it's, like, it's based on it's a fit. The events of this movie are fictional. And these fictional. Different reality are basically coincidental. It got all of that at the end of every movie. Yeah. So even biopics have that at the end of the movie. That's so they don't get sued. Yeah. <laughs> that didn't so happen. Get sued. Like, yeah. <laughs> people will see. Right, you're seeing a lot, a lot of people do tell their style. Like we are uh, like like. Good example, another great biopic is straight out of Compton, which is why we got the Michelle A response. Michelle because, A. Hey, that's yeah. not what happened. She told her version of yeah, yeah. It's like, which is like with these biopics, they're told like they're the perspective of who's telling the story. Of who's telling it? Like yeah. notorious, like Lil Kim has some issues with yeah, the way. Lil Kim, made. like she she spoke out about that, and uh, at the time people like roasted her, but she was well with her right. So how you gonna write about me and Big's love life? Like y'all weren't in a bedroom with us. It's like yeah, okay. it's like, yeah. Like, and then you didn't even ask me. And I'm right. <laughs> and she was like, uh, she um took some shots at the Tory Nutt a little bit. It's like as an actress, why didn't you call me? If you're portraying me, I'm still alive. I'm not dead. Right. <laughs> like call me. Like, and hey, I'm playing. You want to give me some tips? It's like yeah, mm-hmm. the phone call away. Like it's just out of respect. You could have done that. Just like, call her. Like, I've like, seen yeah. the images of Angela with Tina Turner with her. You know, I've seen the still yeah. shots of her, like, learning yeah, the dance. Yeah, he, so, um, he, he met up with Ray before he died. Like, Ray died before the movie came out, but they mm-hmm. did it is, they did have conversations before he died because he was playing him, so he sat down and talked to the man. And yeah. uh, which McCall had blessed her before she died. Uh, Aretha Franklin br- blessed Jennifer Hudson because she wanted Jennifer Hudson to portray her in a movie, and she did yeah, give her blessing. That years, I remember that. She yeah. gave her blessing for uh, Jennifer to play her. Mm-hmm. So, I mean... But that's if what somebody made, is still alive, then you should Lil definitely Kim is still alive. And, and <laughs> the actress didn't even like hit her up saying, hey, <laughs> I'm doing you, just give me some, yeah, like give me some advice. I just want to pick your brain a little bit. Mm-hmm. I was playing somebody, I definitely would want to pick their brain. <laughs> yeah, like you definitely want to give the audience that authentic perspective yeah. of what the person endured you definitely well, it is a whole nother situation if you hit them out and they don't want anything to do with you that's different then it's like well i reached out and that they told me then i gotta fill in the blanks oh, right i gotta myself. yeah <laughs> i get it but that didn't happen with little kim she says she never heard from the tory nun mm. like, she's like not like he reached out I was like no fuck you in that movie like that's that's a whole nother thing that's a whole nother I thing i had to reach out they didn't want to talk to you so i portrayed it the best to the best of my ability like i filled in the blanks and i Capable of what I, with my interpretation, like how I interpreted what this person would be. Like if they were presented with the situation, I reacted like how they would react, how I think they would react in that situation. That's- I read, yeah, I read this, the script, read the, um, if they had an autobiography, I read as much as I could about this person. Mm-hmm. Which- idiot man you read a bunch of so i know like as, as much as i can about this person even though i didn't get to talk to them i, know. Or I watch old uh 
interviews from UMTV raps or, you know, I did that. <laughs> I watched stuff like that to try to educate myself. As much as you can about that person. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's like, um, uh, we'll be going on the whole thing about biofics, <laughs> but it's all good. We never know where the conversation is going to take us. Hey, we, hey, <laughs> the door open. We, I, I just said Tina's her. We did. Do, 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 do. <laughs> But then most of these is um creative license. Like I said, like Malcolm X is like 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 Baines didn't exist. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, Spike Lee sure, he a, sure he was a composite of multiple people. Yeah. And then Baines like was like a fictional character that was like based on like somebody that Malcolm X had read talked to in prison. Yeah, but mm-hmm. the character Baines, yeah, wasn't a person. Yeah. Wasn't a person, yeah. Um, like Rosewood, um, like man, he was man wasn't a uh, yeah. man wasn't a man, and that he because like, the real life man. was it. So like, um, uh, yeah, it's, it, was no, it was no happy ending with that. So <laughs> much more tragic. The fictional version. We got to create this superhero dude. That, that's why, yeah, this myth, mythical superhero cat. It's like, yeah, that's why they had to create the man character to like with movies. You want the happy ending. It's like, you want the happy ending. You know, real life is like it was no happy ending to that Rosewood yeah. story. So like, let's just create this superhero. That that saves the day. It's like, yeah. And it's going to get their money until 70 and they did later. That at the end, it's like, yeah. The, uh, that was the happy ending is that they got paid like, out 70 like, years yeah, after the events United happened. Yeah, the, um, the city of, the, the state of Florida, yeah, paid the Rosewood kid. Some of them were just small children at the time. They were like, your kids and he's like, some of them, they, they got that money. Like, in their, in their 70s now, it's like, yes, yeah, it was like 70 years later. Yeah. <laughs> So that was the happy ending, which is very unhappy when you actually break it up. That's why but I mean, gotta, um, with you movies, want the happy you ending. To be able to tell the story, that's why they have creative license to like make up certain events. Like mm-hmm. Temptations is another one, like a lot, like I'm like Dave Ruffin probably never said uh, nobody ever came to see you. He didn't. Leon said that was a total ad lib. I saw a video about that. Leon was like, that was an ad lib. Breakfast Club, and he talked to I heard him talking about that as well, too. Like, but it made for great. Because it's one of the most coy lines, like still. Well, um, a lot of them did sue, um, like David Ruffin's family sued um, Otis and them. And um, also um, Melvin's mom is like, and uh, Otis's ex. Well, a bunch of them had a suit, but they ended up losing the suit because it's like creative license. They say, hey, it's mm-hmm. like, it's a fictional story. It's based on real events. So like, so they basically, but they did sue Otis and them about that. Shit. And another one that, um, that was more like, than what it was uh, that they amped it up was uh, why do fools fall in love like the Frankie Lyman like yes the wives did sue each other to try to get his estate yeah, that, was, um, where... that was Cap yeah. It's like, yeah they made it more um, like what it was is um, what the, the like... most based on the real life events is um is um the third the the, the third they did sue because um the Diana Ross had made Diana a, Ross did a, remake a, yeah. why do and they, which is a huge hit. And none of them got anything. It's like, why didn't we see any of that money? It's like, so that's where it, um, that's, and it went like that, more like that. And the third wife ended up dead. Like, she's like, if she's still alive, she's still like the executive owns his uh, right, any rights. Yeah, getting right. royalties yeah, off of it, yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. When it came, and that, and the movie was based on the events of that trial. Yeah. Basically. Right. Like I said, the trial did happen, but they made it more Jerry Springer. Like, they made it more, you know. In yeah, a way that I'm sure like nothing that. acted like any of them. Yeah, yeah, it was just really over the top. Like Halle Berry, especially, and Vivica Foss, they were really yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure she said, never said it's a nappy-headed woman. <laughs> a nappy-headed woman in my pool. That never happened. <laughs> 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 Pretty sure that the, nobody said there's a nappy-headed woman in my pool in real life. <laughs> <laughs> We said we could get a whole episode inside of this. This is funny. I want to keep going. <laughs> a hot mess, but the 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 fictionalized story is better than the real life thing. So that's why I have to. Real scream. life is dull. That's why, yeah, like telling. You gotta sprinkle in the fun. Telling the story, like uh, that's what I'm saying. Um, a biopic is not just um, and even documentaries are not just like straight up. You got to tell a story. It's like. Mm-hmm. It's like it's just the mundane events like of this person's life basically but like when you're telling a story is the way you got to tell it yeah to get make people and then the them. and then the unsung heroes who don't get sung enough that i always give flowers to because hubby does it i always talk about the editors how right. it's edited is a yeah. big thing you have to edit it a certain way and you make it look like 
Yeah, because so and so, so and so, and I would never so and so, so and so. And then they cut to the scene with the person doing something that they said that they would never do. That's a great edit. You want you want that. Um, the, the the death row documentary. We're gonna talk. You about. want that edit? That's what you want. So um, Van Winkle, yeah, that or Vanilla Ice, whatever the fuck. Oh you yeah. Want. <laughs> like he did the interview. I, I think it was on APC on one of those interviews. He said, like, yeah, it was sure it took me up. We looked over the edge. And like, I had a diaper on. Yeah, a diaper on that day. They had media cut to the next day. First of all, Suge Knight never hung me for the balcony. <laughs> like, hey, like, the way it was edited, it was just so funny. He like just completely contradicted what he said in that. He didn't. Here's the thing. First he didn't all, hang Suge you Knight per Knight. se, but he implied that he would hang your yeah. ass. That's why I think happened. Suge, it, was, think, it, was like, it was edited I for like comedic value. I don't think that First should thing, honestly hung him, him but <laughs> But I think that he did imply, like, you know what? He implied yeah, to him. Um, and re- they said once the real story is more boring than, like, the Suge Knight hung him from, like, Big exactly. Red. Like, Big Red and Bird. It's, like, it's a better story to tell. In real life, like, they probably did have a conversation in a building. But, like, it said, like, and then some of the guys in the dime even said that. It's, like, hey, so Suge Knight might have hung him from the balcony, but that's not what they, but in real life, like, um, they had to sue Vanilla Ice to get those royalties, like, but yeah, like yeah. the lawsuit is way more boring than <laughs> that. He might have hung him for bad, but he, that, that's not why he got the money. <laughs> like, yeah, they actually took him to court in real life. It's like, so yeah, he, if he hung him, but he still didn't pay him after that. <laughs> right. <laughs> that we had to actually sue Van Winkle, and like that's how we got the money. <laughs> like, but that's not as exciting as like, yeah, he took him and said, hey, I should have had a diaper on that day. <laughs> but, yeah, but we know that it's more exciting in the Again, the Hollywood version, the fictional version, than just okay. Yeah, but um, but Marion Knight versus Rob Van Winkle is in the the court is, the case is not as exciting as Suge Knight hung him off a balcony is way more exciting. So telling the story that way is just like, <laughs> which I'm still surprised they haven't portrayed that in any of these um because uh, Suge Knight has been featured, but they have been with other stories. That's why they haven't done a Suge Knight biopic yet. They got to show that if that's gonna be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll play Suge Knight, definitely. <laughs> My favorite one. <laughs> if you don't want the executive producers. <laughs> all, too, yeah, all in the video. All in the video. <laughs> Where my blood? Okay, bro. <laughs> <laughs> all in the video. <laughs> I'm the executive producer that they were talking about. <laughs> Faith Evans up there. Faith. Hey. Um, Sam Cassell. Was, was Sam Cassell up there? It was with like... You? I think like uh, they had all kinds of like random people that were part of this mess. So, <laughs> but biopics aren't one hundred percent accurate. And speaking of um, let's talk about um these. Uh, I can't wait till they have this dude's biopic. <laughs> who? When, who? Who the hell is going to tell the Kanye story? <laughs> I can't wait to see a biopic. Kanye is gonna be he's gonna pull in Ali, he's gonna play himself. Yeah. Only one's gonna play Kanye is Kanye. Because yeah. <laughs> nobody loves Kanye more than Kanye. Well, like Muhammad <laughs> Ali did that back in the day, like the greatest. It's like yeah, it was basically a Bobby and like Ali playing himself in the shit. Not talking about the Will Smith movie decades later. So about in the 70s, they did a um a, a, a movie about Ali. He played himself in the shit. It's like, it's like well, he, he could pull up the Paul Howard Stern, like how private parts he could pull it off like that. Stern did. He's like, yeah, I'm playing myself. Yeah, yeah I know I'm 40, but <laughs> I wrote with he it. Pulled him in college. He was supposed to be 18, a freshman in college. He obviously was 40. He was 40. Like, like, yeah, I know what you're thinking. I'm 40 years old, but just go with it. He had to put the disclaimer. On. <laughs> just go. He with was it. obviously 40. Obviously. <laughs> I don't know what all you are thinking. <laughs> but the Kanye, I mean, because who would play? I don't laugh. I say DC Young. I just say Kanye. Don't laugh. Yeah, that's it, boy. <laughs> if we're going to go for ridiculous, this is DC Young Fly. Let him be Kanye. Hey, correct, <laughs> the ass here, here, boy. Why the hell not? <laughs> I'm here for the shits. <laughs> if Flash can play Michael Jackson, then he. <laughs> Why not, man? <laughs> I'm here for the shits for it. But no, Mr. West or Yeah, or- yeah like you think we talking yeah. about you think we talk about the shit from last week. Uh, yeah. That's old news. Is old. Yeah. <laughs> Black Lives Matter shirt. That's old. We forgot all about that by this point. <laughs> Kanye just like um 
<laughs> that's so um that's so last week <laughs> the white lives matter so seven days ago yeah that's so why kanye with candace owens in paris <laughs> niggers in paris is so seven days ago at this point <laughs> that's, a, that's a half of a fortnight ago <laughs> fortnight <laughs> That's, um, <laughs> and how long is the fucking score? Like, I know, I think 10 days. Four is 20 years. <laughs> so four yeah. score. Because, uh, yeah, no, yeah, we don't know what the fuck is. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck Lincoln was talking about in the, the Gettysburg. Seven America. years ago. So four and seven years ago. <laughs> yeah. So whatever the Gettysburg took place, I have to, like, look at the date that that address it. But it was talking about 87 years prior to it. <laughs> So, I mean, I guess he was referencing something that had to do with slavery, I'm assuming. That's what that was a reference he for. Link, it seemed like it was attached to slavery. So <laughs> that's his legacy is the whole... I'm just going to go with. I'm going to... Assuming it was like talking about some shit that had to do with slavery. But let's talk about it. Um, First of all, what do you think about Chase? So I'm saying, hey, we don't want your money, yay. <laughs> well, I feel like people are just... I feel like personally, Kanye or Ye or whatever he's calling himself these days, um, I feel like we're watching a ticking time bomb. And a bomb is going to explode at any moment because he's just getting more and more. Like at first, it's like, okay, is this him just, is this him trying to get the world talking about him? But was he actually having episodes? So, like, I'm thinking it's Colin A and Colin B because I think initially, he was doing stuff to garner the attention because Kanye knows how to get attention. He does. But now it's like some of the shit is just seeming like you know what I think? like a mental break now, it seems like. You know what I think? What? I think Kanye is trying to see like how far he can go before he actually gets canceled. <laughs> I think Kanye <laughs> wants to get canceled, but he's like, okay, that didn't work. Let's see. Let's, 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 let uh, let's kick it up a notch. It's like, yeah, like he's trying to see like Emma that. Kick up a notch. Bam. <laughs> Because I said that a week ago, like, I'm not saying Kanye listens to us, but yeah, I said, like, Kanye is uncancelable. He's like, hey, like, hold, hold, hold my hold my Yeezy. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to see how far he can go. Like, uh, you say I'm uncancelable? <laughs> Let me get canceled. Let me see how far I can go before I get canceled. Yeah. I think this I think, is the, I think he's doing it on purpose and it's strategic. I don't think he's having a moment. I think, yeah. He's trying I to see how far he can go. I think and Colin B at this point. I think he's trying to see how far he can go before he gets canceled. Because I'm trying to read, because like I said, I've been around patients, like in my prior job, I had a person who was, I forget what they called it, but this person, they could see demons. They actually saw demons. Mm-hmm. Very, like, when you hear that someone can see demons, you're like, it does make you like, okay, like, what? <laughs> yeah, so I mean. In this case, OV sees monsters, then. I'm a monster. I mean, I'm trying to be sensitive into the fact that, like I said, I have been around like the mental illness. I have been around people that have had mental illness, whether it be manic, um, schizophrenic, um, what's the other one? Bipolar. I've been around that. So I'm trying to. um, He was um, diagnosed bipolar disorder. Bipolar. He was diagnosed as being bipolar. I don't know if he's still on meds, but no, he was on meds for that at one point. Mm -hmm. Bipolar. And like I'm looking at, like I said, initially it did seem like this is just garnering, this is just all an attention ploy. It just seemed like that at first. But now as I'm just like analyzing more things, I'm like, I think it's still some attention seeking, but I think it's some underlying too. I think it's both. I think it's column A and column B. I don't think it's full out just he's having a full on breakdown, but I think that it's a mix of both. And when you're using that to fuel the other, it's that's not a good combination when you're like trying to fuel one with the other. It's uh, not yeah. a good combination. He's doing this shit on purpose. I see, like, um, <laughs> that can air badly for I'm, everyone. I'm trying to see how far you can go like before he gets canceled. I think that's but I feel, but going back to your original statement about your original question about Chase, I feel like 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 the old expression, all money, good money. I feel like they just like, hey. <laughs> Because we talked about a week ago with Adidas, <laughs> oh, buddy, buddy. Adidas trying to end their partnership, even though obviously he's their highest seller. But um, like I don't know um, whatever became of that is like because so much didn't happen since we talked about that. So I don't know if Adidas yeah. has the end of their partnership, but I know they were talking about. They said they were going to re- reevaluate their reevaluate the relationship, reevaluate. So I don't know whatever happened is like so. He's obviously their biggest seller. Like I said, way more than any of these athletes they got signed. Like. 
I, I see people in Yeezys all the time. I don't see people in none of those other shoes. I don't either. Yeah. But I think he's... But all money ain't good money. So I think that people are becoming more of like a, hey, I'd rather take a loss than deal with some shit. <laughs> I get like that as well, too. Like, not necessarily with the shit like what Kanye is doing. Like, just, um, I'd rather work with... um. Somebody that's um not a head case that's not that's not as talented as the person that thinks they like the gold in there and they just like a fucking pain in the ass, just like yeah, just um unstable. Just they right. you don't want to work trouble when they're worth, yeah. Exactly. I'm radio and I've been around a lot of talented folks. And I say I'd rather sign the motherfucker that's like hard working, but may not be as talented as this person, but you know you can they're reliable, you know they're they reliable, like, yeah. With this mm-hmm. other person, they just yeah, hot and cold. It's like, yeah, I get rid of the hot and cold person. It's like, yeah. like the whole, uh, like, how we going back to, uh, you said about the temptations, like David Ruffin, like, great, singer, David. Yeah, great yeah. singer, like, one of the best voices of this, like, ever, one of the best voices. And they decided but, that they rather, they rather, they said, replace him with Dennis because Dennis wouldn't bring the headaches. And Dennis yeah. was just, yeah, he was a fine singer in his own right. Probably not as good as David, but like Dennis had a good voice. Like, yeah, don't look in your father. Like he had, yeah, he could sing. I can't get next to you, babe. I can't get next. Yeah, Dennis, like he was just, he was a fine. <laughs> <laughs> Papa was a rolling stone. <laughs> yeah, like he had some hits. It's like, yeah, yeah but I mean, get rid of that motherfucker and bring in Dennis. It's like, yeah, yeah, because. Are you going to want to deal with, I'm coming to shows when I want to come. I'm going to come to rehearsal when I want to come. I'm going to come high. Like, are you... To be called David Ruffin in The Temptations. <laughs> are you dealing with that? And I won't I won't go on the stage unless you change the name of the group, which that might have been Cap in the movie, but they, they did portray that. It's like, it's David said he wouldn't come on stage until they agreed to change until the name. Until they changed the name. <laughs> but he did come to that show late in Vegas when he showed up and was Going like, when he said, "Okay, we gonna go on." He walked in, so hi, I'm David in. Ruffin. Hi, I'm David Ruffin. <laughs> <laughs> then they fired him right after that. <laughs> 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 if that happened in real life, that would be funny. So they got back stage. Okay, you fired. <laughs> fired. <laughs> sure you fired. They did that. Yeah. But, um. Also, um, Kanye, um. The um the the anti-Semitic comments, which may or may not have been anti-Semitic. I gotta be careful with my words on this podcast because we see like <laughs> those in power do got the power. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you can't like, you can't make certain comments about certain people. Certain, I mean, it's ain't, like, yeah, like certain. It's ain't, like, let's let's go on. A, let's get on my soapbox right now. It was like how like every any other group like they got there. They have their soldiers out there like fighting for them. It's like. <laughs> Like, let us drop the the f word that rhymes with maggot on this podcast. We yeah. can let's let's talk about let's say what Kanye said. Like the um the killed what I don't know what he said, but yeah, like I'm not gonna repeat what. The, yeah, we're not gonna repeat that. Repeat that is like yeah, or like yeah, let's talk about um let's use the wrong pronouns with the trans community, but but you can say nigga as much as you want on this podcast, and nothing's gonna happen. <laughs> well. Well, well, well. Our people are just like, yeah, oh, just look the other way. All these other groups, like, yeah, you, 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 you splatter you know, them, they coming uh, for you. Don't yeah. you know that we invite everybody to a cookout? <laughs> to a fictional cookout. Is inviting them to the Everyone cookout. Everyone invited to a fictional cookout. A fictional cookout, yeah. But since we did bring them, Kanye, you and like, white, you, you, you could say, you could be an old white man and tell somebody that if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. It's still. <laughs> What our people are sometimes. <laughs> He's invited to the cookout. <laughs> I laughed. I laughed low key at that. I did, I did laugh. Yeah. I did laugh. Because it was stupid. It was dumb. But let's, um, let's talk about my we, breakfast cup brethren. Yeah, because they did. That's not the first time they have when Hillary Clinton was on. <laughs> they had hot sauce in her bag swag. Hot sauce. They and like here, no, nah, here's how the whole conversation went. It was just funny. It's like they talking about what yeah, you get. What do you usually carry in your bag? No regular shit. Said hot sauce. And then they said, oh, and then Charlemagne said, you know, black people are gonna say that you pandered him by saying that. And she said, you know what she said. Is it working? Is it working? I know I saw that and I was like, <laughs> and nobody checked her for that shit either. I, I, and that's where your ass lost. 
That's why your ass lost. And then because fast forward that. four years later, and then Biden said you ain't black. So like, yeah, I can't wait for the 2024. Like, what they gonna do on Breakfast Club? Yeah, <laughs> Seems like they're gonna say something dumb every year on the Breakfast. That's my thing. Stop pandering to black people. Just, because yeah. um. Where people and like I said, I know like a person that I would open that I want, like I'm gonna put this out there, Candace Owens, talk on our podcast. Hey. I want you to come and talk. Cause I want to have a real conversation with you because I feel like she's smart, but I feel like she sells too much into the I have a black friend, so I'm not racist. Don't let people make you become the black friend that's not right because hey, something I'm a, um I don't can, be that. I'm gonna admit this publicly for the first time right now. I was like, I read Candace's book, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's like just like yeah, it, she has she released a book last year. I read it. I haven't. And it was some good points in there. Yeah, it's like, and that's the thing that I say. Like everything that she's not wrong about. Yeah, it's like the pro Trump bullshit. Like, I yeah, I'm not feeling that. But like, she does make a lot of good points about. She does because about lack of lack of fathers is like more destructive in the black community and like police brutality. Like, I, which mm-hmm. yeah, she, she makes some good points about that. Yeah. Because it could be a co- it could be a correlation between if it's an absent father and then what happens, like how the people turn out. Like that's it's a direct correlation. I'm not saying that all people who have an absent father are going to end up. That's not the case, but the risks are higher because mm. it does take two. Like you got, it takes a community to raise a child. It does. It takes a community. It does. You need a strong support system. But um, the video that I'm talking about is when Candace gave like her point about her rebuttal about why she wore the uh, white lives matter. Yeah, she, just, she did on her podcast. She, um, and I watched I, that I checked, clip. I, I checked out the whole episode of that. Yeah. She has, I watched her. that clip of her talking about the black, that she doesn't want to be part of the black culture because it's full of perversity. And, you know, she went to a whole spiel. And my That's thing that said, I like, cancel me, she's like, I want to be canceled from that shit, which I kind of, I kind of get what she says. Just and, the way you say it is all fucked up. And this that. was my response. I was like, okay, I listened to all that. So people are like, yeah, but she's right, though. I'm like, if that's what you think black culture is, you don't know what black culture is. Black that's culture is not. That's not really black culture. That's that's rap, not black culture. Rap, culture, I would say, but it's not. Black really. culture is not being able to rap the words to a Wu Tang song. Black culture is not being able to fry chicken. Black culture is not being able to dance. Black is that's not hey, black culture. Hey, that, hey, that, you said what? Okay. That's black. That's stereotype. Yeah, you, got, you got an ill crossover. That's not black. Yeah, that's not black culture. Yeah, My thing is when you when you lean into that like that, you're no better than the white people who stereotype us as that. And my thing that I say black culture is black culture is taking lemons and making lemonade. Black culture is being presented with all these obstacles in front of you, but yet it's still, it. you still succeed and rise above I'm that. Above it, I agree with I, that. Give them. Um, they give you the scraps. Uh, you get the scraps. Pig, you turn that shit into soul food. You make soul. That's black culture. Black culture is you can afford the least amount of opportunity, the least resources, but yet and still you become a billionaire. LeBron James, you still became a billionaire. That's you black culture. Grew up um, on welfare in the hood, but you became With a single a single, a single teenage mom on mother welfare. Yeah, but on welfare, but you're still a billionaire. You grew up to be culture. a billionaire. Yeah. And you raise your friends and you raise your crew around you. Yeah. They they Maverick and uh, Maverick, uh, uh Paul, like, yeah. mm-hmm. you raise you elevate your crew. Mm-hmm. That's what black culture is taking the bare minimum and making something great. That's what black culture is to me. Aside from all that, you can dance and you can no, that's not black culture. Mm-hmm. So let's stop with the whole cookout thing. That's just my thing, that's my soapbox. So when you do that, that's what you 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 live in the stereotype. So if a white person be like, "Hey, do you know Tyrone?" and then you like, "I don't know Tyrone," because we've all been in that situation where like white people are sort of just because y'all both black in a mostly white space, you guys know each other. I've been in that situation more than once, and I'm like, I don't know them. And Candace <laughs> also spoke about with Kanye because um, it's been like <laughs> TMZ, like you know, like they talk, they spread days. I like, said that she was um acting as Kanye's chief advisor, and she spoke out about that. It's like saying that um, 
me read like in my Candace Owen voice. <laughs> all black people know, like all black people are. Like, <laughs> so and I had no idea I'd be wearing the t-shirt until I arrived in Paris to guest the Yates fashion show. I'm grateful to have been side aside for such an iconic moment and fostered such a much needed national conversation. Also patently false the idea that I'm working for Ye as an advisor or have any made any calls on his behalf. If it isn't clear, Ye and I have only spoken, I would say Ye has never had any problems speaking out on his own. Like, so she said that end of quote. Like, no, but Candace Owens was terrible right there. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to judge your Candace Owens, it's okay. <laughs> but she did say that, yeah, that she, um, uh, she's, uh, she said she's not an advisor, basically. Yeah, yeah, I'm not an advisor and we not cool like that. She's like, yeah. Like, I, I met him, I know him in passing. Yeah, yeah we know, we kind of know each other. But he's I'm an associate, not. but we ain't. Anything he's saying is on his own, like, I'm not uh, yet. <laughs> he's an associate, so I ain't going to his house for cookouts, basically. <laughs> like, yeah. I ain't getting back to his cookouts. We've known, what and we've known that since uh, like, at least 05, like, yeah, with the George Bush doesn't care about black. <laughs> Kanye don't have a problem speaking his own he mind. Like, he was like, yeah, like, you don't need um Candace Owens to tell him what to say. Like, Kanye is going to say what he's going to put. Kanye going Kanye. All this stuff. Is Kanye himself like yes? Yeah, so, uh, yeah. He's not being influenced by her. Kanye been saying shit like this, like mm -hmm. wearing a Trump hat. It's like he been saying shit like this. It's like, yeah. and that's just my thing about her. Like some stuff she's right on, but like when she goes and she tries to, she tries a little too hard to act like, like race. Like yes, like racism isn't. She does it all? I think mostly for um, I'm not. Well, I'm, I'm not going to disaccuse her, but um. A lot of his financial gain is like she has, exactly. I was I, I was about to say that like, like she like, yeah. she leads too much into like oh racism doesn't exist it's in your head and it's like racism is still it's, uh, here it's I'm not a, it's, it's not a, overt as a as a capitalist I get it like I'm it's I'm not overt racism is not overt as it I, was as a capitalist I get what she's doing she's doing it because she's her audience is here to hear that shit it's like she starts saying like the um uh, uh she might she would lose viewers and shit yeah she's doing it for her pockets. Yeah, like, you saw what happened when she said that the uh, Super Bowl halftime show was lit. They heads blew up. How could you like that? That filth, <laughs> that misogynistic music. Rap music is misogynistic. It's this that gangster rap. <laughs> and she was like this. Snoopy she was like shit. Dog. I grew up on this. That's what she was like. Shit. I grew up on Mary J and Snoop Dogg. And this is all just from the hood. People don't realize. That. Yes. <laughs> she said shit. And then them people told her, and then you see that ever since that happened, she distanced herself from that. You ain't gonna see her being like, uh, uh, uh. you ain't gonna see her crip walking to Snoop Dogg. You ain't gonna see that. No, no, no. <laughs> she ain't gonna mess up her sponsors. No, no, no. But well, um, with her, I, mean, I, get I get it. Like, it's like a whole movement toward, like, with it. um, it's a whole like. I won't say new movement, but it's just, I guess, gaining its theme now with just black conservatives online. Oh, yeah, the Blexit. That's what they called it, the Blexit. Blexit, yeah. yeah like, is Kerr, like... Um, Herschel Walker. Um, Herschel Walker, we're going to talk about his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Herschel Walker. You got um uh, the, the Hodge twins. It's like a bunch of them, like, where they got, like... And they all got followings. Um, ABL, yeah. is, is, they all got followings. They made people comfortable with being like, if I'm suddenly racist, i.e., Miss Morello from Everybody Hates Chris. If I'm a subtly racist person, then I'm very comfortable about being around black people like that because I can lean on. Like, if I start feeling like, you know, something I'm saying is kind of questionable, but then if they validate me, it's like, oh, see, they say they agree with me. So that means that I'm not. It's like, no, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> you still are. But I definitely feel off. sorry for the people of Georgia because, like, you got Herschel Walker on one side and you got Raphael Warnock on the other side. Like, <laughs> They both clowns to me. <laughs> Bottom line is uh stop I mean, you doing damn if you know it on that side. Pick stop your poison. <laughs> Worsha Walker, Raphael Warnock, pick your poison on that. that stop uh, pandering to black people. Stop pandering to poor people. <laughs> Just stop pandering because like people pander to poor people. Yeah, the ex football player and a fake ass pastor is like, you gotta pick your poison. <laughs> <That> was, <laughs> geez, <laughs> I feel sorry for the folks in Georgia that gotta vote for senator right now. <laughs> I'm glad we're not in Georgia because that's the train, Rick. <laughs> Yikes, <laughs> Shit. <laughs> but um. What else did Kanye? I haven't watched the Drink Champs interview. That's why I don't want to comment on that yet. I, I haven't watched that either because I haven't watched it. And I said he made some comments about George Floyd, which I've just been seeing the headlines. I I've been seeing the I've been seeing that. I just recently saw the headline about the whole George Floyd with Kanye and which is like that's um that's not really news. It's like that's what the defense um that was their argument. 
That was their argument, yeah. Um, yeah, like he could have died because of Chauvin's knee, but um, he could have died because all of fentanyl he had in his system. It's like that's what the um, defense is presented like during the trial. It's that's like, duh. The defense is trying to get their trying to get their, off, their, their off, client off. off. Trying to get Chauvin off, yeah. The defense so was, was uh, trying to get their client yeah, off. So, like, but like a lot of people didn't watch that trial anyway. So they this is new. Like the average person, mm-hmm. they, like to me, I'm like that was the whole defense's case right there. That was their case. Because like, you want to like minimize, killed him, but the fentanyl could have killed him. So, like, if you're not, you want to get your person you off. If you, like, the and goal is to get Johnny the, Cracker. Yeah, like the glove. If it doesn't fit, you must. You must the like, goal is to get your people off. If or you, if you can't get them off, get as little time as possible. And it's and it's Jay Z's first album. It's called Reasonable Doubt. That's what Reasonable Doubt. About. It's like, yeah, like, okay, yeah. If you just have this much doubt that the fentanyl is, killed them, you gotta quit. Like, that's this what this is they all the doubt that you need. You see yeah. that little speck? That's the do- that's all the reasonable doubt you need. You need one person to say, you know what? Maybe one, one juror this way. Maybe yeah. it didn't happen like that. You need one, just one. Because that's what they're holding. Twelve, one out of twelve. 12. Sure, like we saw that video it was horrible, but look at the toxicology report. He had all this fentanyl. Like yes, yeah, so he would have died anyway, and that's may have been what killed. That's what they were presenting, like the um, the defense. Like that was their whole defense, like throughout the trial. Was that it was the fentanyl, but um the jury just wasn't going for that. They we saw going for that. The jury said we saw the video. We saw the video because <laughs> even and then even like I said, I'm not a lawyer, I don't profess to be one, but even like with having a high level of fentanyl, you have a high level of fentanyl already in your system. Somebody puts you in an extremely traumatic situation and you're you're panicked. You're and with his behavior, you could tell that George Floyd <laughs> wasn't normal. You could tell he was on so yeah, you're, you're panicked. Watch the um the full body cam video, mm-hmm. not the um the viral cell cam video. Yeah. Watch the full video right from the beginning. He was um acting bizarre, like right. But you put somebody in that oh, that's yeah, already like, in the situation all combined with um Chauvin and the other cops' actions. You put them in that situation. So anxiety level on that, yeah. Like of course yeah. it's gonna raise it, exactly. So yeah. whereas, you know, I may have just had a normal episode and I may have come down from it, but now you put me in an extremely stressful, anxiety-filled situation. I've never been on fentanyl, but if it makes you paranoid like that, yeah, you're already paranoid. So that, yeah. just, and then the cops like trying to, yeah, restrain, you just raises your level of paranoia. Yeah, yeah. anxiety and just, mm-hmm. so... But yeah, like right. So like Kanye's not spitting anything new. Like that's was the defense. That was the the, the defense of Chauvin's like attorneys. And then like, but then he gave money to George Floyd's family. Then Kanye gave money to George Floyd's family. That's like, what? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> that's what they said. I, th- I think they said he gave money to like the family or something. He was one of the celebrities who gave money. He might have. I don't know. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. That's why I said he's. He's all over the place at this. I also point. haven't watched Candace Owens' documentary about BLM that just dropped too. Like I haven't. Seen yeah, it. I saw that. I saw the um, premiere. I watched the trailer. I haven't watched the um, the the doc yet. And I, I watched. watched the trailer and what it looks like in the chat because just um, I said just ignore the title because a lot of times greatest people lie get, ever told. I think is what it's called. It says George Floyd. George Floyd, the greatest lie ever sold. That's the name of the documentary. Yeah. And if you just look at that title, it's very. It leaves a bad taste in your mouth, and a lot of people won't even give it a chance. But then, when I looked at the trailer, like to try, the the doc has nothing. It has very little to do with George Floyd. It does. When I looked at the trailer, the trailer looked very intriguing, and I because I think I'm gonna watch it. I think I'm gonna watch the doc when I get a chance. The trailer it seemed very um like her opinion seemed very objective. So much she was just trying to literally just, and that's what I like. Follow the fact. Follow the money, it seems like. I just want to pull facts. I don't they, want... They took in over $80 million where that money... This is money. That's what uh, the trailer is. About. That's what the doc seems like is about that. Yeah. yeah, it just seemed like she actually was going and actually pulling real facts and stuff. And like I said, I know firsthand about... Well, not me personally, but I mean, I know about looking at stuff. Marcus is an accountant. He does this for work. He does audits on things. He has to audit people. So if somebody is saying that they're getting this much money and where is this money going? Mm-hmm. Where's this money going? Yeah, and that's what it seems like is about. But um, it seemed very objective. It didn't Candace seem... Owens and the title like is spicy. yeah, the title is very. I won't even give it. A chance, yeah. But, but I, the... I now I got that's just on my watching list. Like I gotta watch some. Um, Me too. I watch Candace's doc, and I gotta watch some um, the Drink Champ, the latest one with Kanye. It looked very objective. I said because that's why I just want the facts. I don't care about opinions. That's about... all about facts. Like I said, we. I don't care about that. I'm all about like I filter out the noise, is what I call it. Mm-hmm. 
It's like just the facts, like John McClane said to the. I'm gonna uh, uh, I'm gonna borrow from Will Smith in that movie where his accent was bad. Tell the truth. I want the truth. That's what I want. I want the yeah, truth. Just give me the truth. Dragnet. I think Joe Friday when that yeah, like you said, just the facts too. Just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. No, McLean said it in Die Hard. I think that was um die, <laughs> Dragnet from back. Why it was a nod, yeah, like the Easter egg for Dragnet, probably. I believe mm-hmm. that's I'm not old, so I don't know if I think that was a Dragnet line. <laughs> Sorry, boomers. No. Dragnet was Law and Order before Law and Order. <laughs> With Joe Friday, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dun, 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 I think, dun, ironically, I think like that was Dick Wolf's favorite show growing up. Was why Makes it. sense. Yeah. And even the Makes way sense. they started off, because Dragnet had their little disclaimer too. Like, yeah, it said, like, the falling stories are real. Like, yeah, the, the, the names were changed to protect the innocent. Innocent. Just like, hey, hey like, <laughs> the city of New York, you have two um, distinct fucking. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the criminal two, justice system, especially yeah, based the, 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 the <laughs> Yeah, the criminal does say yeah, you have you have two distinct yeah, the, the the law do prosecute I said the law will investigate and um and the the district charge officer prosecutes the offenders. These are their stories. Boom, boom. So even that, boom, he, boom. yeah. So it makes sense that he grew up watching. It does make sense. <laughs> even though he started his show off the same way Dragnet did, <laughs> but um. I think I'm done with all of this mess. It's like it's, yeah, the, it's other stuff yeah, to talk yeah. about, but we got damn near a whole episodes about Kanye, Candace Owens, and um Herschel Walker and Raphael Warnock. We got a whole damn near <laughs> about all of that. <laughs> um let's talk about more um like um since we stand in the conspiracy theories and just oh, the man. tomfoolery. <laughs> you heard about um do you are you familiar with Alex Jones at all? Do you know who that is? The name sounds vaguely very um vaguely notorious, a uh, controversial right wing conspiracy theorist. Yeah, okay, because yeah. the name sounds vaguely familiar. He ran the Infowars um channel, which is now shut down because obviously they got him the fuck out of there. <laughs> it's like yeah, so um, but Alex Jones for years he had been saying, you remember the Sandy Hook school shooting? He had been yeah. saying that was a hoax for like years. Well, the parents of those children and they they put a class action suit. Yeah, okay, that's where I know his name. Yeah, yeah, okay. I know I know the name. Like if they 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 ruled against him a one billion dollar settlement against with a B a billion dollar settlement. You know this dude ain't got nowhere near a billion dollars. So yeah, I don't know how that's gonna play out, but I had to say I gotta talk about that shit. (laughs) Cause Sandy, if I'm not mistaken, these kids were what like first graders? Yeah. It was about 10 years ago, that shooting, that Sandy Hook shooting. Um, I have a second grader now, so I know the pain of having a child that young. And have you lost your child and then you have some nut just on the internet saying, like, yeah, those are, those are paid actors. Like, the yeah, like, say you were an actor, that yeah, like, you played, the parents are acted. Those, it was, it was the school, the shooting was a hoax, and the, the grieving parents are actors. Like, you lost your kid and they said you're an actor. <laughs> so that's why they hit him with the suit, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if somebody said I was an actor in that situation and you're going to see this acting, I'm about to act a fool on your ass right now because that never how happened. dare you? How dare you do that? Like, are we that are we that much in this world where, like, we think that, like, people are trying to talk about, like, the Uvalde shooting, like that. It's like, these are innocent children who were killed because some nut came in there and shot somebody. Mm-hmm. So, why are we... Yeah. Like, come on. Like, it, it is it's, nuts it's, out there. I'm not saying nuts where, don't exist. Um, sure, that's free speech, but at the same time, you got to, yeah, come on. <laughs> you got to be smart. You can't just say that something was didn't happen. And you're making, yeah. <laughs> you're making an unfounded claim. That's the problem. It's an unfounded claim. Mm. Where is the receipts about these people being actors? Yeah. Where's the receipts about these children? Like, you can look up and you can see death records on people. You can see that. You can pull death records. You can pull a death certificate. When you die, you get a death certificate. You get a birth certificate. You get a death certificate. So you can pull all these death certificates and see that these were real children who died. Bottom line is, yeah, just free speech. Shut up. Free speech. <laughs> <not really free. laughs> bottom line is shut up when you don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> That's the bottom line. With a billion dollars if you say some shit without being able to back it up. <laughs> have deep that's about have deep pockets if you want to talk stupid shit have deep pockets because you're gonna need it you're yeah. gonna need it so 
Best of luck to him. Not really with this. <laughs> million dollars. Yeah, it's a wrap for his ass. <laughs> yeah. But um, thoughts and players going out to Brandy. Yeah, I saw that. I uh, said that she was hospitalized for seizures. Like, I still don't have all the story. I read, like, the headlines on TMZ, but, mm -hmm. yeah. And I saw it on Shade Room, too. So, I mean, I don't know what is happening or what's going on with Brandy, but I do, you know, wish that she, wish her a speedy recovery, and I do wish people would give her her privacy because um, for you to have seizures, it's like maybe – she could be epileptic and we just never knew because a lot of people are epileptic and do have seizures. Like I know several people that are epileptic and they occasionally have seizures, but it's not something that they'd be like, yeah, I mean, you know, they just don't advertise like that, but they, you know, they keep that private. So I'm hoping that whatever health crisis that she's going through, I'm hoping that she, you know, recovers and that people give her her privacy. That's what I'm hoping. Like to a speedy recovery for there's nothing worse than like you're trying to heal and you know you know how I feel about that. Also, best of luck in a speedy recovery to um Hall of Famer NBA legend the Kimbe Mutombo. Oh you no, know, um he's um going under for um he's having brain surgery for tumors. Yeah, so tumor, so um the whole NBA community I've been seeing reaching out to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because um, Matumbo, he's a good dude. Like, he's not just a ball player. He's like a humanitarian. He does a lot for his. Yeah, he does a lot. He's, yeah, he's very active. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I saw that. I was like, oh, Matumbo with the brain tumors. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, anytime you go in there and start cutting away pieces of your brain, it's, it's scary. We had a cousin that had surgery. Like, yeah. That. Yeah, it, it can be a scary experience. It can be. When she first came out, when she was having memory lapses, remember that? She case? was, yeah. She had some memory lapse. Like, she went back and um, back, with reference. Back in time to stuff that happened, like, 30, 40 years ago. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> but wishing him a speedy recovery because we need, I love the uh, the Geico commercial where he <laughs> blocked the city, like, slaps the city <laughs> Not today. <laughs> and the cereal box, he just slaps it and just explodes the cereal box. Because yeah. mom didn't get mom was like, why is he? I said, that's what trouble. He blocks shots. That's his whole oh, spiel. He, he would um, wag the finger after he blocked it. Because mom didn't know what was going on. She's like, why is he doing that? Which is um, a hilarious. <laughs> Jordan, when Jordan dunks on him and Jordan gives him. Jordan does the finger wag. Of course, they give Jordan a tech, but it was still, it was well worth it, that tech. Wow, well, yeah. Oh, it was always fun. He should have got a tech. Yeah, <laughs> all the fun, all the fun. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. And uh, do you see about Ben Gordon, former Chicago Bull? I did see about, I mean, like, yeah, we can stay in the um, sports uh, thing now. Got because... a lot going on as far as sports. Wow. Because I saw that and yikes. Like, it just, it didn't look good. Like, I didn't see the video of what, obviously, what they said, but they said that he uh, punched his 10 year old son. Like, yeah. About, yeah, assaulting his son. I saw that. And the thing is that that's why you have to not comment until you know the full story because initially i said when they said he for um discipline or something they, they, they minimize it in the title they said something like that about what happened i saw initially like, people were saying well kids these days just need a good butt whooping like, like old uh, niggas think that um everything is um but the answer to everything is violence for old niggas because <laughs> i got going, i got going my ass going, whooping. Back, going back to your slave room too did i say that out loud yeah. I got my ass whooping. I turned. No, you didn't turn out fine. You have problems expressing your emotions. You're very passive aggressive. You have a lot of issues with expressing yourself. So you did not turn out fine. No, you didn't. Yes, lady. But, <laughs> but uh, when people were saying that, and then but then when the whole story came out saying that this boy got punched, Chloe like punched. And I haven't seen a video, but um, is some sure there's a video out there of what really and happened. And think about it, like athletes are. Guys who are big and size like, and in shape, six three, like two ten or two twenty, like he's, he's not a little man. It's These like, are guys that are big and in shape. Mm -hmm. And you punch a child, a ten year old is a child. That's mm -hmm. in the they said he he punched him. So 
Yeah, what type of discipline is that? Punching someone, punching a child in the face is not discipline. Oh, that's just not. <laughs> that's not discipline. It's not. Mm. So I mean, but it was reported that Ben Gordon does have, like, I mean, he's is he diagnosed with bipolar? I think that he was diagnosed. I know he had something um, going on, which is what ended his basketball career. I forget. It was something like that, though. Yeah. Because I read his article when he broke down about, like, you know, how at one point I think he felt even felt suicidal, like depression was making him feel suicidal. And I read, like, an article about, like, basically what goes through people's heads. So, like, even, you know, even, like I said, you're having fun, the Aaron is saying that so-and-so's career, like, they're a scrub, and, you know, you're having fun going in, talking about people. But it's like, these words can hurt, and mm -hmm. this person may be borderline suicidal and then you get a thousand comments in one day about that you know you're worthless and you can say that words don't matter that you know you're tough as nails and this everybody everybody claims to be tough as nails until someone says something that triggers you the wrong way everybody is badass un unfazed unbothered by everything until it happens to them until somebody says something that triggers you and triggers your trauma triggers you pretty much so, Everybody has a threshold. Everybody has one. Yours just may be more than someone else's, but everybody has a line that shouldn't be crossed. Everybody does. So, but hoping that it's a resolution with that because child abuse and neglect things can get very, very nasty with stuff. So, yeah, I'm hoping that it's a hoping it's something positive that comes out of that for him. Wow. Um, you hear about um, Jalen Rose's sister in the mom's house. You hear about that story? No. What happened with Jalen Rose? I saw that he did horrible on Celebrity Jeopardy, but that's all I saw. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, um, what's going on? I give the um, clip those version. This could be running mm. for a long time. It's like, yeah. For time's sake, yeah. Jalen's sister is um there. She's living in their mom's house who recently died. And like, but Jalen is trying to sell the house. It's like, yeah. So but, mm -hmm. uh, here's the thing. Jalen bought the house, you know, like NBA player, like you go um, you go you buy your mom a house. Like yeah. your mom a house, that's that's the first yeah, thing that people yeah, use. Typically, yeah. So yeah. Um, so the sister, a lot of people, it's causing online, like people are divided on this, saying, um, well, Jalen, he bought the house, so if he wants to sell this, it's right. And then so on the other side, of, with, I'm siding with the sister, we had, how are you going to sell his mama's house and all of that, yeah. So what do you think about that? Yeah, the sister's currently living there. Jalen's trying to sell it. Mom recently. But I think it's <laughs> with all stuff. Get your business affairs in order before you die. <laughs> have your uh, power of attorney. Have your executor of your will. Have all your shit in order because when you die, you can't be like, yeah, well, I want the... Because the mom may have wanted the sister to get the house. Or she may have... Like, it may have been, but... But if Jalen... What if, is Jalen's name on the deed? Is he on the deed? Is he on the... Like, yeah, like you... Yeah. Get your shit in order. Like, that's my line that I say. Get your stuff in order. Like... Hire the necessary people, get all your stuff in order so you can decide how your how your estate or whatever should be divided. Everybody needs to do that. Like people, like I say, especially with them, I say like they have money. Like, I mean, Jalen Rose, like he's a basketball, he was a basketball player. He's on TV. And in the NBA, he's still on TV now. Probably yeah, still millions of Yeah, so he's getting money. So I mean, that was something that needed to be taken care of. That's my opinion. But since it wasn't clearly taken care of, what the like, I don't know what her financial status is either. Right. So you don't know that. Yeah. It doesn't look like it was taken care of. So my thing is, um, unless it was um, like, I'm not sure what the relationship is between sister and brother. Like I said, in our family, we're close, but every family isn't close. We know that everybody just isn't close with their sibling. But it's like you need to have an understanding like if you know your sister's situation she doesn't have a lot of money like it is kind of bogus out there like if you do like okay i'm gonna leave and displace her and leave her homeless but i mean if it's a real conversation that occurred ahead of time like what type of conversation like it's not enough it's not enough information i have to like give an educated 
You know what I mean? Like, I want more context. I want more clues. I saw a video that's been um from her Instagram that's been going viral about her just going off about Jalen Rose, like selling a mama's house. That's what I've been seeing. Mm-hmm. Because um, I mean, what was the agreement? That's what I said. Stuff needs to be put in play. What was the agreement? Like, mm-hmm. if she was living there, like, we could say, like, obviously, like I said, Jalen Rose of a certain age. So, like, his mom was of a certain age. So, she was an elder. She was elderly. Yeah. Usually, elderly people have illnesses. They have, like, usually a lot of elderly people, it passes from natural causes. So, if she was a person who died because of natural causes, um, the daughter may have moved in and been like her caregivers. I, I think that's what the arrangement was from what I've been reading. That the, the sister was living there like before yeah, the, the mom caregiver. Like, mm-hmm. is that so if, so if that's the case, then if she was living there as a caregiver, like we always say, um, yes, being a caregiver is a hard job and not nearly are people compensated to what they should be if you are a caregiver. But seemingly people who have money and i'm not being mean when i say this but it's like the person who's living there doing the day-to-day stuff it's like i'm living here it's like but i'm paying all the bills hmm. it's like yeah you need both to cover both need to be both need to happen for this thing to work because you do need somebody in there taking care of the day-to-day stuff but you also need money to take care of that so both well, things a bit of that in our family you, you know the situation yes right. both things need to exist so like so the person who's writing the check generation we saw that happen yeah so the person who's writing the check is just thinking like I'm right I'm spending all the money but it's like you're not you're just writing a check you're not here when mom is like when I have to like change her uh change her depends yeah. at two o'clock in the morning you're not here doing that and both um are necessary like you said yeah and I said both have to work both have to you need both for this to work so I'm not saying that one outweighs the other but both of them need to be able to come together and come to some sort of agreement. That's why I say I need more, more input, more context about the whole situation before I just go and say that, you know, like she's right or he's right. It's like, yeah. bottom line, get your shit in or before you die, bottom line, that's the what you need to do because you avoid situations like that. Mm. <laughs> Whatever it is, not another damn podcast, 281. A whole lot we went to on that one. Yeah, yes. <laughs> all over. From fake cookouts to <laughs> Kanye being Kanye. <laughs> to biopics being Cap. There's <laughs> yeah. like a lot happened there, but appreciate you supporting us. You want to support us further, you know what to do. Give us a like. Also, subscribe, share, rate, review on all your platforms, some on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, SoundCloud, iHeart, TLC Talk Radio. What's good, Tasha? Hey, Tasha. YouTube and your Amazon Alexa devices. And you can follow me at Ozman the Wizard on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Oz Radio on Snapchat and Facebook as well. You know how I do it. And you can check me at MSIMH626 on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Mm-hmm. Also, S-C-R-A-G-U-L-L-E-Y-1 on Twitter. S-C-R-A-G-U-L-L-E-Y-7 on Instagram. Also, please like the Straight Gully Facebook fan page. Check out straightgully.com for your blogs and your vlogs. And for your video production needs, check out straightgullyproductions.com. I'm Ozman the Wizard. And Naima. We will talk to you later. Bye. I'm gone. <laughs>